Hi, Mark here, and welcome to Kensington at the Movies. Filmed in the 1980s, it starred River Phoenix in his breakout role, and Judd Hirsch and Christine Latte as 1960s radicals gone bad and on the run. In fact, the entire family had been on the lam for 15 years, always one step ahead of the FBI, who were trying to bring mom and dad to justice for a bombing they committed in their long-ago leftist salad days. It was directed by Sidney Lumet. Know the film? It was running on empty. The movie delivers an off-the-chart acting repertoire. River Phoenix, the handsome young actor who died at age 23 of narcotics, could have moved into acting's A-list. He had a short and challenging biography. He was raised in a cult in Oregon, and in a counterculture I wouldn't wish on anybody. But he found his element, if only briefly, in acting. Christine Latte delivered a superb performance. As a somewhat repentant leftist terrorist, whose main regret was the lifestyle she forced on her children, and not of maiming victims by the bomb she set. In my view, her performance in Running on Empty was certainly Oscar-worthy. Any actress would have been proud of that performance. Judd Hirsch gave a solid <laughs> Judd Hirsch presentation as the cocky, self-righteous, and narcissistic patriarch of a family on the run. The screenplay was written by Naomi Foner, one-time doyen of New York's Scarlet Set. She married Eric Foner, a very hard-left historian at Columbia. And then she moved on to director Stephen Gyllenhaal, with whom she had two children, Maggie and Jake, both of whom are, in my view, very, very skilled actors. And their mother certainly proved her skill at screenplay writing in the sensitive human drama chock-a-block with strong and credible lines that were delivered flawlessly. This movie was not an apology for 1960s radicals turned terrorists turned escapees. It was not, in my view, a political movie and was certainly not preachy. In fact, there was a scene in which a wizened 1960s comrade reaches out to the Lottie character to help him stage a bank robbery. She snickered back at him that the war was over and that he, the not-so-tender comrade, never developed emotionally beyond rebellious late adolescence. And this, in my view, is one of the movie's strengths. Running on Empty never fell into self-righteous political bathos. The movie has an art house feel to it, and given the performances and strong dialogue, it was art, not great art, and thankfully not didactic progressive art, but solid art by veteran and aspiring actors, in my view, it is far better than Lumet's other movie about American leftists, Daniel, which was, in my view, weary and preachy. Roger Ebert liked Running on Empty and praised Lumet's directorial skills, and I certainly agree. Jay Carr of the Boston Globe praised its, quote, idealism of anti-war radicals. Maybe. I didn't see that idealism in the movie. I am not sure that the father was cast as a sympathetic character. He came across to me as a maladjusted loudmouth with no off button. Dave Kerr of the Chicago Tribune saw it as too much, in his words, of a teen drama. Okay, fair enough. But that teen, River Phoenix, really delivered, and his love interest held her own on screen. If it was a teen romance, it certainly was one of the better ones, better crafted ones, one of the more intelligent ones, one of the ones you're likely to remember. So, what was Running on Empty's connection to counterintelligence? Well, it was about a family on the run from the FBI for a terrorist crime the parents committed as college kids. 
The dialogue brings up related issues. It's a good movie, not a great movie, but it's a good movie. And I think you should see it, certainly, if you're interested in counterintelligence and the milieu of the time of the 1960s. This Kensington movie review does not represent the official position of the United States government. I have to say that. But what do you think about the movie? We at Kensington really want to hear your opinions. For Kensington Security Consulting, out here.